Good afternoon. It's Good now afternoon. 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We'll start. Welcome all. Please mute yourself, but always show your video picture. Sign in your name, Facebook account, or email address in the chat box. Include names of the companions with you attending this uh, pep talk. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the pep talk is on. Group pictures at the start and end of the pep talk will be done. Please show your face in the video. Reminder, please take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise or colete for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate like the one shown below. I have placed the link in the chat box. Let me just tell you that uh, what I have in mind in my pep talk, which may run for the next three years, is to empower at least 30 persons with my family members and my patients as a priority. This is my key performance indicator. I hope you will be in my group of 30. As of today, August 28, 2021, I now have 36 complete OLETE passers. Thank you, everybody. For, thank you to the uh, complete OLETE passers and congratulations. Okay. So this is a better performance compared to the last three weeks. So let's now have a group picture before we start the formal pep talk in two minutes. Please turn on your video right now and show your face. Yeah. Alice, hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> birthday ko ngayon. Happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. Miss <laughs> mo na lang ako kay Ate Aids. <laughs> okay, ready? One, two, Three. Okay. Let me save this for a while. Page two. Ready? Everybody get ready. One, two, three. I have a patient empowerment program which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. What I had in mind in my pep talk, as I said earlier, which may run for three years, is to empower at least 30 persons with my family members and my patients as a priority. I hope you will be in this group of 30. I launched this pep talk on May 15, 2021 with the module on COVID-19. The second module, patient empowerment, third module, patient management process. I'm now on my fourth module, rights in patient empowerment. The uh, fourth module consists of two parts, basic rights, which we just completed last week. And today we will be tackling patient autonomy and advanced directive. So my pep talk today is entitled Patient Autonomy and Advanced Directive with the empowerment objective of uh, enabling the uh, lay people to have a better understanding of patient autonomy and advanced healthcare directive as rights in patient empowerment. The uh, foremost right in patient empowerment is patient 
autonomy. Patient autonomy is defined as the right of all competent adults to make informed decisions about their health and medical care. Patient autonomy is one of the principal ethical principles established in the medical field or in the medical world and being respected by all physicians. Patient autonomy is also embodied in the Bill of Human Rights, specifically on the right to health. Right to health means the states, nations, or countries have the legal obligation to promote the health of their citizens. And under the right of health to health, there are two components, freedom and entitlement. The freedom component has emphatically stressed the rights of every citizen to control one's health and body. Thus, patient autonomy is embodied in this freedom component of the right to health. So every physicians or everybody, every physicians or healthcare providers and even relatives included should respect patient autonomy with regards to the decisions on health. In medical practice, the principle of patient autonomy underlies the requirement to seek the consent or the informed agreement of the patient before any investigation or treatment takes place. However, these principles come into prominence when hard decisions involving patient autonomy have to be made in the care of terminally ill patients. The Advanced Healthcare Directive will demonstrate the application of patient autonomy. There are two key words or phrases in the definition of patient autonomy, competent adults and informed decisions. Competent adults means conscious, coherent, and discerning adults. Informed decisions means a permission or no permission is granted by the competent adults after proper understanding of the purpose of the procedures to be done, options with benefit, risk, cost, and availability data analysis, and consequence, possible consequence of the procedures to be undertaken. These two components or requirements must be fulfilled for patient autonomy to be ethically and legally binding. So after being advised properly and adequately, after studying more data and information by himself, if needed, and after introspection, a patient can end up with a decision of either informed consent or informed refusal. Whatever be his decision, because of his right to patient autonomy, this should be respected as long as there is nothing illegal in the court of law of the land where he is residing. Patient autonomy should be respected in whatever settings, such as when being managed by a physician, being managed by relatives, and when doing self-management. So Advanced Healthcare Directive, or the, the short for this is Advanced Directive. So an, an Advanced Healthcare Directive is patient autonomy in action or in operation. An, an Advanced Healthcare Directive or the other term for this also is living will, is an advanced healthcare planning in which the author or the person who makes this explains how he wants medical decisions to be made in case he cannot make decisions already. By setting the contents of an advanced healthcare directive, the author is exercising his right of patient autonomy as what are usually placed in the directive are what medical measures he will allow to be done 
and what he does not want to be done to his body. By the way, a last will is different from the living will. So a last will as differentiated from a living will is a document in which the author or the person who makes this determines what and how he wants done with his property and other material things after he passes away. Advanced healthcare planning is not just about old age. At any age, a medical crisis could leave a person too ill to make his own healthcare decisions. Advanced healthcare planning can be and should be done at, in any adult age. Advanced healthcare planning is not yet very popular in the Philippines compared to other countries. If there are people making it, there are usually they are usually done by terminally ill patients who have accepted their status and who want to be or to prepare well for the last day or eventuality, not only for themselves, but also for the family. It is advisable though, for all competent adults to make an advanced healthcare directive as part of the patient empowerment program whose goal is to gain greater control over decision and actions on their health. As mentioned at any adult age, it does not have to be an old age or at any time when one is suffering from an incurable disease. An advanced healthcare directive is also included in an intentional living plan of a person who wants, who plans out his life properly, which we will discuss in the next session. To repeat, an advanced healthcare directive is a document that spells out some medical decisions and actions that the author wants done and not to be done to his body in case he cannot make decisions anymore. The document can be notarized or not, what is most important is there is a concrete document that is shown to be made or that is known to be made, dated, and regularly updated by the competent adult author, and its contents are known to and accepted by immediate relatives and significant others. This document serves as a guide to the immediate relatives and significant others when the time comes to implement the contents, as well as to the healthcare professionals, the doctors, okay, the nurses, who may eventually be called to manage him. An example of advanced healthcare directive, this is my uh, advanced healthcare directive, which I formulated in 2006 when I was 57 years old. And I have been reviewing and updating this up to now. Okay. Last updating was on January, 2021, except when I, was, I, when I reached 72 years old and which I've made known to my wife and two children. I'll show you the details in a little while. So this is the title of my advanced healthcare directive. Advanced healthcare directive on how I want to be treated medically when I am near end of life, when I have a terminal illness, and when I am bedridden. So that's the title of my advanced healthcare directive. I, Rinaldo O'Hoson, residing at this address, being of sound mind, willfully and voluntarily make this advanced healthcare directive. If the situation occurs that I am in a veget vegetative state or coma from an incurable disease process or injury as determined by two physicians approved by my wife or in her absence, 
either my son or my daughter, I desire and direct that all life-sustaining procedures and means be withheld or withdrawn, including assisted vent respiratory ventilation, artificially administered fluids or nutrition, such as intravenous, gastric, jejunal, and or other tube feedings, and blood transfusions, and that I be permitted to die naturally. If I should develop severe mental impairment to the degree that I am totally unable to perform activities of daily living, or at least to recognize and meaningfully communicate with my family and others, as determined by two physicians approved by my wife or in her absence, either my son or my daughter, I do not want intensive or prolonged hospitalizations, major surgery, artificially administered fluids or nutrition, such as intravenous, gastric, jejunal, and or other tube feedings, blood transfusions, or assisted ventilation. If the circumstance occurs that I am in a state of near death, but a good possibility exists, more than 50%, more than 50% probability of recovery to a purposeful situation, such as my being able to write or otherwise communicate my helpful thoughts and information to my family and others, then I do not restrict my physicians from exercising their skills with prudence, wisdom, and restraint. However, I do not desire extreme measures such as a transplant, extensive and complicated surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, dialysis, etc. And if the state of near death is part of a terminal cancer or other progressively incurable disease process or injury, then I desire that measures be directed at comfort rather than to delay the moment of death. Furthermore, if I am in a vegetative state or coma from an incurable disease process or injury, or in a state of near death with a progressively incurable disease or injury, or if I have developed severe mental impairment to a degree that I am totally unable to perform activities of daily living, or at least to recognize and meaningfully communicate with my family members or, and others, as determined by two physicians approved by my wife or in her absence, either my, my son or my daughter. And if my heart and lungs cease to function, I do not want to be brought back to life with medications or with electrical or mechanical resuscitation or ventilation, or even with ordinary cardiopulmonary resuscitation. In any of the above circumstances, it is my desire to be made comfortable when medications that are used to control pain, knowing that such medications may unintentionally hasten death. However, medications should not be used with the intention of causing death. It is my desire that the cost of my terminal care be kept to a minimum, inclusive of diagnostic and treatment, and also place of care as part of minimalist management. Diagnosis should be mainly clinical, based on symptoms and signs. Unless there are compelling reasons to the contrary, I would prefer to spend my last days at home rather than in a hospital or other expensive medical facility, unless being at home would be 
an unreasonable burden on my family. This advanced healthcare directive shall be accompanied by implementing guidelines and instructions which I shall read and followed by all concerned. I am legally competent to make this advanced healthcare directive and I understand its full import. My wife or in her absence, either my son or my daughter shall enforce this advanced healthcare directive. Witness my hand this 20th day of January 2021 with my signature affix. Here are my implementing guidelines and instructions. I, Reynaldo Ojoson, am a mortal human being who may get sick anytime of whatever cause. In the event that I became unconscious and cannot make decision regarding treatment to be instituted on my body, here are the guidelines that I am leaving for my immediate members, family members, my brothers and sisters, and my attending physicians to follow. One, for diagnosis of my health problem, rely heavily on clinical parameters and include observation. Two, do paraclinical diagnostic procedures only when the results will significantly affect the plan of treatment. Three, try to save me only when my chances of recovery without disability, note without disability, chances of recovery are more than 50%. No heroic measures when my chances of recovery from my disease are less than 50%. No respirator, no nasogastric tube, no tracheostomy, no gastrostomy, no urinary catheter, no intravenous fluid, no blood transfusion. Just keep me in the private room until I expire. No heroic measures if I have the following dreaded diseases or conditions, cancer and cerebrovascular accident or stroke. Do not hurt me unnecessarily when my chances of complete recovery are small. Let me die as peacefully as you can afford me. Seven, keep cost of my terminal care to a minimum possible, inclusive of diagnostic and treatment, and also the place of care. As mentioned, advanced healthcare planning is not yet very popular in the Philippines. However, what is becoming more and more popular now is something akin to the advanced healthcare directives in persons who are seriously or terminally ill. The issue of withholding and withdrawing life-sustaining orders in these seriously or terminally ill patients often crop up in the last minute. In this day and age, most, if not all hospitals in the Philippines already have a ready pro forma form commonly called as DNR order or form with DNR denoting do not resuscitate. Well, the DNR order is the so-called do not resuscitate order. The DNR order should originate from the patients and significant others. They may arise from discussion with the physicians. The attending physicians of these seriously or terminally ill patients can make the formal medical orders only upon instructions from the patients and significant others. Patients and significant others should tell their attending physicians way, way before how they want to be treated when they are seriously or terminally ill in terms of withholding and withdrawing life-sustaining treatment, which may be futile and which may affect their quality of life or dignity of life. If they don't tell the, their attending physicians beforehand, the latter meaning the physicians will, will order 
all possible life-sustaining treatment despite all odds. The following have to be decided by the patients and significant others through an advanced directive or DNR order, either to withhold, not to be done, or to withdraw if, has, if it has been done already, or to remove after being done. Whether to do resuscitation or not, whether to do defibrillation or not, whether to do intubation or not, whether to do mechanical ventilation or not, whether to do dialysis or not, whether to do nasogastric tube insertion or not, whether to do gastrostomy or enterostomy or not, whether to have artificial hydration or not, whether to have artificial nutrition or not, whether to have medications or not, whether to have diagnostic procedures or not, and whether to have operative procedures or not, etc. The patients and significant others can specify what to withhold and what and when to withdraw. All the above instructions for the patients and significant others should be written and signed and witness in the document or form. After giving the initial instructions, the patients and significant others can change and revoke them anytime they wish. However, this instruction should also be written and signed and witnessed in the document or form. So this is an example of a short advanced directive or <clears throat> DNR order, okay, instruction to the physician. So you have the name, the patient ID, the birthday, the address, okay, religion, civil status. This is just an example. So and so is currently in the state of dementia. The family members represented by her two sons would like to have the following wishes if she is already in the state of near death or unconscious and unlikely to become conscious again. Do not attempt resuscitation or DNR allow natural death, do not intubate, maximal medical care with no invasive procedure, comfort focused treatment with medications to relieve pain and suffering rather than to delay the moment of death. But if there is a good possibility that exists of recovery to a purposefully situations wherein she can still communicate helpful thoughts to our family, then we do not restrict the attending physicians from exercising their skills with prudence, wisdom, and restraint. This is another example, a very brief example of the DNR advanced directive. I am so-and-so a cancer patient. Should I be brought to the hospital during emergency or during my last breath? Please do not intubate and do not resuscitate. Thank you. Okay, this is a handwritten uh, instruction by from the patient, okay, sign, date, and then he, she has a PS, I just need oxygen. So there you are, the patient autonomy and advanced healthcare di directive as rights in patient empowerment. So takeaway here is maximize your knowledge, kaalaman, on these rights, maximize your capability, kakayanan, in seeking for and implementing these rights. And lastly, maximize your self-determination or kapangyarihan in using the rights in gaining greater control over decisions and actions affecting your health. So I end this pep talk with the title of Patient Autonomy and Advanced Directive. And I hope that I, that I have empowered you to have better understanding of patient autonomy and advanced healthcare directive as rights in patient empowerment. So we, before we go to the next uh, part of the program, I'd like to uh, do some reminders. Take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise, OLETE, for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate. I have placed the link in the chat box. And then this particular pep talk will be uh, a little different from the, the uh, previous pep talk. Okay? So to get a certificate of com com commitment and accomplishment. So aside from the OLETE, 
Okay, a mentee has to submit a personal advanced healthcare directive. Okay. So you, you can use the uh, RO Hoson Advanced Healthcare Directive as a template. You just modify it. No, change your name, change my name there, okay? So I'll be giving you the advanced directive, my copy of my advanced uh, healthcare directive, okay? Then after you have done, email to me your completed advanced healthcare directive. It will be kept confidential, okay? So the next... Uh, Announcement is that, as I said, as of now, I already have 28, uh, 36 uh, complete Olete passers. Thank you and congratulations. I think uh, there are 10 more who are trying to catch up. So I might get a total of 46 uh, Olete passers for the, for the core course okay, of this uh, pep talk. Okay. And then I just like to repeat the announcement uh, that I made to uh, two sessions ago, okay, for those who have not attend this, attended uh, the previous meeting, okay. So I have updated the design and development plan for the RO Hoson Pep Talk into courses, formal courses, okay. Three types of courses, the so-called core course, health disorder courses, and health issue courses, okay. The core course includes patient empowerment program, module on patient management process, module on rights in patient empowerment, which we're going to end today. And then the, the next module, the last module for the core course will be staying healthy and contented, okay? So the uh, content of the uh, last module, staying healthy and contented will be introduction and intentional living plan, healthy lifestyle plan, screening and periodic health check, early diagnosis and early treatment, and then first aid and basic medical care. So timeline for this, so today is August 28th. So probably by August, October 2, we'll be done with the last uh, uh, part of the uh, last module. So once everybody has completed the uh, core course on patient empowerment, a mentee is entitled to the certificate of proficiency. So examples of the health disorder courses will be uh, the following. COVID, which we have done that, which, I'm, which I will not repeat anymore. Okay, cancer course, breast disorder, thyroid disorder, skin and soft tissue disorders. Okay. And sample of health uh, issue courses will be end of life management, palliative care, use of supplements and vitamins, patient-centered care, unnecessary operations, unnecessary medications. Okay. So for a mentee to get a certificate of mastery in patient empowerment, okay, the requirement is that there must be completion of the core course plus two courses under health disorder courses and two courses under health issue courses. Okay. So with that, uh, let's now proceed to the group picture taking okay, before we start the uh, question and answer and interaction. So please turn on your video and show your face. Gallery view. I'll start with page one. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Let me uh, Page two, ready? Everybody get ready? One, two, three. Okay. Okay. So the floor is now open to questions, comments, okay? And any kinds of interactions, okay? 